All right, and so we're so grateful to be joined by some of our island's uh, education leaders. We're joined by Acting Commissioner of Education, Eric Magofnia, uh, Board of Education Chair, Andrew Orsini, and Board of Education Member, uh, Macy Tenorio. Uh, good, good afternoon to all of you. And uh, PSS uh, Acting Commissioner, I just wanted to start with you because I know you have a busy schedule. Uh, today is uh, the first uh, day of a return for some based on the school, uh, based on the screening and testing. Uh, schedule that you released. Um, how's it going so far? And I know you just got out of meetings with management about this issue. So I forgot that I was muted. Anyways, um, thank you, Tom, for that question. Yes, um, today is day one for Marianas High School and San Vicente Elementary School, as well as uh, the Rhoda High School. And so far with the screening, uh, things are going well. Uh, Marianas High School, uh, they've had a lot of students register. I believe it was in the, uh, I think it was 1200 students who registered for the screening. And um, San Vicente also had a great turnout and Rhoda High School had a great turnout as well. So, um, the screening is ongoing. We will continue to screen all students and staff as we reopen schools. And uh, I also wanted to just ask you for your comment on the petition that we've seen circulating around. It's garnered over 2,600 signatures last I checked. Is that something of concern to you that you're seeing uh, people want to remain online or uh, I, you know, I saw the video from Marana's High School yesterday that said we're ready, you know, uh, with vaccinations, with the testing strategy. What's your message to those who say, given the news of the 95 new cases today on Monday uh, that were reported over the weekend, uh, who are still very concerned and might not even send their kids to school, even with this new plan? And, and, and we understand, we understand where the parents are coming from. Of course, we value the input from all our stakeholders. Um, as educators, we want to be sure that we provide the best possible education for all our students. And with this, with our protocols in place at all our schools, at all our schools within PSS, and then now also with the screening, uh, we keep adding more layers to ensure safety of all our students. So. We really hope that by doing this and sharing all our protocols that, you know, parents um, that it will alleviate a lot of the fears and hopefully um, send the students to the school because uh, students really do benefit from face-to-face -face instruction. And as much as possible, we would like to return to face-to-face. -to -face. But we understand with the fear and the concern that uh, some parents have brought up, uh, we are definitely taking that into consideration as well. And one of the strong messages that we've seen coming out of the public school system is that you're working with the medical professionals, the health professionals, and that you're trusting in the science. Um, at the legislature, I heard uh, part of the uh, presentation that you gave in the education committee that um, in some ways, uh, having children go to school uh, is, is safer than having them stay at home. Can you elaborate and maybe correct me if I'm wrong in that statement of what uh, the school leadership meant in saying that? So just to clarify, I did not mean to say that students were not safe at home. I'm just saying that all with all the added safety protocols that we have on campus at the schools, um, you know, this is one reason why parents should feel more at ease sending their students to schools because we do have all these safety protocols, whereas if they're not in school and they're they're going out in the villages and being able to co-mingle with other people, um, I hope that they are following the three W's with the masking and social distancing. But you know, the reality is the reality is when we go around, when, when like when I drive around, I see the I see the um, the mingling of everybody, and not everyone is really adhering to the face mask or the social distancing. So uh, we hope that they will continue to practice these safety protocols, even when they're not at school to prevent the spread of COVID. But with regards to my comment on schools being safe, um, 
the reason why I said that is because we do adhere to the three W's and the safety protocols are in place in the schools. And uh, I just wanted to give a, a chance uh, for uh, board chairman and uh, board member uh, uh, Macy Tenorio also to jump in there, um, just getting your comment on uh, the recent specking cases, concerns from parents, and also what your outlook is moving forward if cases continue to rise. Uh, Chair, maybe we'll start with you. Uh, you know, we just need to be uh, a little bit cognizant. Uh, I know that our neighbors down in Guam as to what they've been going through and we take heat and heart to exactly see what's been happening, transpiring down there versus our area here in the Sinomai. And we take more, more so precautionary measures like the acting uh, commissioner uh, mentioned. But you know, one thing that I, I do want to stress the importance that this is something that we, we were going through that, that, that it's no one's fault. Uh, we just have to uh, lay and, and work with what we have. Uh, right now, uh, you know, the, the, the actuality of this uh, search now uh, has been supposedly anticipated if it should come and now it's here. And this started from uh, the point of October 28th of this year where it was found that there's a number of search going on. So I, I take it that right now uh, with the CNMI PSS in itself, uh, rest assured that uh, safety and the, and the health of our students come first and foremost, and, and of course, with all our personnel, all the teachers and everybody, so of course, support staff, bus drivers and everyone, we are, we are very uh, conducive to know what we're dealing with here. And, and, and the, the safety of our children is just the most utmost importance at this point. At this point. Uh, just opening the schools now at the time when we should have opened back in uh, November 15, uh, for the reason that the uh, PSS administration had asked if they could be given a little bit more time to prepare all the schools for actual uh, sanitizing of, of all areas within the school before the students report back. Uh, mind you that uh, the uh, COVID task force and also our good people in the um, uh, area of public health here and, and as well as uh, the hospital has assured us that uh, opening the schools is safe safe in a sense where even before November 15, they, they, they gave us that good guidance on that. And now 20, November 29th today, which now we open first of some of our schools at this time. So there's testing going on at all, on all levels for these upcoming schools to be open. We just wanna be sure that, uh, you know, everyone is, is uh, in part with just trying to protect as well as everybody itself. And we don't want to make sure that uh, that nothing goes out uh, that is missed or put out in, in a sense, because we, th this is the thing that we're, we're, we're taking this seriously, just as like most of our students, we take their education seriously. And, you know, I just also want to emphasize that we have been doing the most possible uh, imaginative uh, kind of safety that we look forward towards this. And, and, and mind you that uh, with our CNMI wide uh, herd community of, uh, over 84% have been already vaccinated. Uh, I always stress that to, to people out there, including the board that, you know, that 16 percentile that has not been vaccinated, uh, there's gotta be some underlying reasons and, and the reasons to deal with maybe other medical issues or for that matter, uncertainty of sort. And, and, and we gotta respect that, but at least the majority of the people that we have, our students are all fully protected. I can also say one thing for sure that if our schools is not as safe as what it is, then I can assure you right now that our schools right now, as we speak, is ready to take on the, the students back. And then the fact that our quarantine of, of, of uh, entry level of people coming from off, uh, abroad, right now I could say if, if, if we're not parallel to that, we're probably even exceeding that. So I assure all those parents that are a little bit baffle of wanting or uncertainty of wanting to have their child come to school. I want to assure them that I, for one, guarantee that I will not allow to have the schools open until I'm certain that the safety is in place. And mind you, we have a lot of hardworking people there within the respected schools. And I, and I, my hats off to all of them. And, and you know, we, we, we try to collaborate more with what we're dealing with with the hospital, the public health people, and of course our COVID task force that is out here. So 
as you know, right now, uh, the CNMI, uh, as compared to other areas within the U.S. Uh, jurisdiction, we, we have the, I would, I, I would be proud to say, we're, I'm very happy that we have the most safest in terms of uh, uh, alleviating and, and controlling this, uh, this thing of the virus as far as our community and our schools and our, and our children, most especially. So I stand ready for that, and, and I'm really proud for that. Uh, Macy, did you want to add uh, your, your perspective in this? Sure. I uh, Thank you, Thomas. And, and I think both Acting Commissioner and our Chairman um, said it very well. Um, we trust and believe in the protocols that, you know, PSS has worked so hard to establish um, and all the school staff have worked so hard to ensure that they practice um, and that on the school level, you know, we are doing everything that we can to keep our children safe and, and to you know, help families feel safe enough to let their kids come to school. There are many parents and families like, like has already been said that are still anxious, that are still fearful, that are still um, feel uncertain about the safety of schools. But there is also a group of parents, uh, guardians and students who wants school to reopen, who are ready to come back to school. Um, and so we have to, I guess we're working to see how we can hold these two groups of people equally um, and work to accommodate and to validate all of their, their concerns and their needs. Because school is not just access to education right? We know that that is our primary role, is to educate the children of the CNMI. But schools also provide access to other important needs, like food, access to trusted adults, access to mental health supports, counselors, um, you know, social supports, with students being able to spend time with peers, you know, access to important things nowadays like testing, antigen testing, and vaccinations. So, you know, having the schools reopen provides access to all of these really important um, services that, that addresses the needs of the whole child. So I think PSS is really going in that direction of not just um, addressing the education, definitely prioritizing that, but also trying to look at the whole child and address the child's full needs. And so we feel like reopening the schools is a really good step in that direction. We did the closure um, when the governor, you know, sent out his directive, we, you know, we followed suit and closed all the schools. Um, we kept the schools closed to sanitize and, you know, to really give parents and families time um, to feel safe enough to return. And so now we are moving forward with reopening so that we have, we give all students the chance to have their needs met. And uh, Acting Commissioner, I, I know you're in uh, like three meetings right now, uh, but before, before you, uh, you, you leave, I, I just also wanted to ask you um, about uh, the uh, vaccinations for, for children and uh, what your message is to the community. I, I think today is the last day for the comment period for uh, CHCC in terms of mandating it. Um, what, what is your, your comment to the community about uh, vaccinations for children? Sorry, Tom, I think we're both trying to unmute me at the same time. Um, okay, so can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay, so with regards to vaccination, um, like I said, you know, PSS, we, we look at the science and we look at the data and we, we trust the science and all the studies that have been conducted with all the, the doctors from CDC and everywhere else that's really involved with the COVID task, with the COVID. And Right now, the science is saying that the best the best defense against the COVID um, is is really to get vaccinated. So yes, BSS, we are we are encouraging um, everyone to get vaccinated. Um, the science is there, and it's proven that it is our best defense. So really, it 
it's nice that we have all these protocols, but uh, vac vaccination is really the, the best defense. So that is my message that we, we highly encourage everyone to, to take the vaccine. Now you're now you're on mute, Tom. Board member uh, Macy, did you have anything to add about vaccines as well, and your message to the community? Or chair, if, uh, if you'd also like to comment on on vaccinations for children. And like the acting commissioner mentioned earlier, uh, you know. Uh, keep in mind that, uh, you know, in the start of this whole pandemic where the virus came in uh, on, uh, as being identified through our community back in March of 2020. And at that time, we didn't have any vaccination whatsoever available. So we, we took heart into just following all those safety measures of protocol to ensure that we try to contain or protect our community in whatsoever way we can do. However, uh, th that question that you're asking about the public health side in terms of uh, the, uh, the hospital board implementing a policy that all students of sort that are going to register or come back to school, they would have to provide what they call a health clearance, a health clearance to say that they met the, 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 the need for this virus that we're facing, which is the vaccine, and that, that they can now have their child come into the school. The, the only thing that I, I, I just want to share that uh, I think was imperative that I think maybe we need to look at, and, and that's why uh, the Board of Education here, we did have several meetings, did discuss this on a, on a, uh, on a, on a so-called basis that we wanted to look at mandate, making it mandatory. But, you know, like the acting commissioner said, we have, we got the things from the medical side. They're saying that ages five to 11, they're not, they don't really have to get the vaccine, provided that their health is in good order, that there's no underlying medical issues or whatsoever. And, and that's fine. And, and I give that to the parents to make that decision. Likewise, uh, the people, the personnel within PSS, we really need to make sure too that they are also minded for, for that. And we don't make that a mandatory for all our personnel because of the, the view that, you know, just keep in mind that what we do in our business is to educate our children. We are not an employment factor. Yes, our personnel is an employment factor, but keep in mind that we respect the parents, the individuals of concern here. And, and, and you know, there's nobody else that is better to know about vaccinating your child except the respected parents out there. And, and, and I leave it to them. Uh, you know, our, our government, our central government have made it a mandatory policy for all government employees out there that are providing what they call these services out there for the public that they be mandated because of their position. But yet, if those that don't want them, of course, uh, you know, they, they might not be allowed to continue the work. But here in the PSS, our role here is to provide education, give the proper education for our children and our students out there. And, and, and you know, rightfully so, uh, with all my respect to what is going on with uh, the hospital as far as that policy, that is incumbent to the head of the hospital, which is Ms., uh, Mrs. Uh, Esther Munia, giving her that authority to determine that and, and not the Board of Education, because we're not in the health area. Yes, we're concerned about the safety of our children, but I know there is this protocol and procedures that we have in place here in our local government to provide that uh, a venue to make things happen in a proper way. So this is the thing that I just want to share and, and make it clear to everyone out there. Um, thank you. Tom, if I may just uh, clarify. So with regards to vaccination, yes, um, it has always, we've always been encouraging um, our, all our stakeholders to get vaccinated. Now with regards to the uh, mandating of the vaccination, Yes, uh, as chairman had stated, we are the health profession, we are the educational professionals, we are not the health professionals. So if, if it does become a mandate and CHCC makes it a mandate, then of course PSS would do its part. 
but as far as uh, PSS stands on mandating it, we we leave that to the health professionals to make that decision. And uh, board member Tenorio, what what are you hearing from uh, your constituents or uh, you know families on the ground about uh, vaccinations? I think that the vast majority of people that that I communicate with, you know, understand and accept the science behind the vaccinations and and are fully vaccinated themselves. I was very surprised um, to learn um, that many families have availed of the vaccine that is that is um, available for five to eleven year olds. And, and I think that's a good sign. I think as a community, you know, obviously if we're above 80% of eligible uh, community members already vaccinated. I think as a community, we very much believe that that is a great, you know, getting vaccinated is a great way to protect yourself and your families, especially because most of us live in multi-generational homes. I think, um, you know, we care if not for ourselves and definitely for the other people who live around us. Um, and for, but like the chairman said, I mean, we, we hear and we understand and respect the opinions of all families. And there are many families still who do not want to get back their, their students to get vaccinated or the adults to be vaccinated for, for whatever reason. Um, and we honor and respect those reasons. And, and like the chairman, uh, like our acting commissioner said, we leave the mandate of the vaccinations to the health professionals CHCC and its board. Um, and if they do in fact um, vote to mandate it, then we will enforce that policy. Um, I, I also do wanna ask you about uh, the survey. Um, I don't believe the results are public just yet, but um, or, or it's also my understanding that it's the survey also represents maybe how the community is split on uh, sentiments about returning to school and, and the safety measures and whatnot. Um, are you able to update us on, on the survey results or what you're seeing at least preliminarily? Yes, Tom, so I have been working with my, with my media team and they are finalizing the results, I'm putting it all together and it will be shared on all PSS um, social media pages. So that will be coming out today. Okay, and uh, I did want to ask you because uh, the news of the shift in opening uh, uh, policy or strategy changed just 24 hours before everyone was supposed to go to school. I think it's safe to say some students might have had their bags packed already before the news came out. Um, uh, we're also hearing uh, sentiment about, well, uh, you know, Christmas uh, holidays are coming up. Students will be going back to, you know, will be taking vacation anyway. Why not wait for the next year to until cases resettle uh, down and uh, we learn more about the spread here in the CNMI? Can you respond to parents who are saying, why not just wait until after Christmas vacation? Well, and this is uh, for anyone who'd like to respond to that. I'll, I'll take that uh, part. Uh, you know, sometimes when we think about how we go about on a on a year-to-year -year basis for education. And, and, and there's already a schedule, uh, a calendar, so to speak, a uh, school calendar that has already been prepared prior to the next following school year. So keep in mind that, you know, we, we need to be mindful too of the requirement under public law that says that here in the CNMI, they say that we have to meet a certain number of uh, instructional days. But mind you that on the recent law that was amended, it gives now the, the, the Board of Education that, that flexibility to look at, now looking not only at, at calendar days, but instructional minutes to meet that, that criteria. So at this point in time, uh, in, in, in all essence, and, 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 and I, I believe, I appreciate that public law that came about because you know, our, our area here out here is really prone to a lot of typhoons besides this pandemic and what, what have you. So we need that flexibility to kind of like meet that, that, that criteria goal in order to suffice what the accreditation uh, team's uh, standards are, are to be met. And this is where we stand for that. So uh, given that, 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 that perplexity of doing, I think it's a good thing right now. So 
At this point, uh, I think this is just a lot of learning laws that our school children here in the CDMI has uh, experienced. And this is, goes all the way back to 2015 when uh, Typhoon uh, Solomon hit us direct. And again, uh, uh, Typhoon U2 in 2018. And then now what we're facing around going on two years is the, this pandemic, uh, this thing with the virus. And, and, and so be it that, 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 that we need to be a little bit flexible and mindful of these disruptions that do occur, but to make sure that our students are meeting that, that minimum requirement of their education. And, and that, that's where it's at. All right, uh, that's all the questions I had. I just wanted to open the floor for uh, any of you to you know, address the community with anything else you'd like to mention. Okay, I would like to, oh, oh. I, I just wanna to say to everyone out there, uh, for all the parents that uh, believe and trust in the system with the PSS that you allowed your child to go back to school, thank you for that. For those parents that are a little bit baffled, like I said earlier, are not too sure, Think about it because right now the most direct impact is your own child. If you don't give your child that opportunity of, of privilege to continue their education, then somewhere, somehow, something is going to affect your child. And we have in place all the mental health people that we have, uh, our legal group that will provide mental health counseling and therapy for all those people that in one way or another are affected by this dilemma that we're facing, the situation that we're in. But Mind you, it's not only just for PSS personnel, but all the, the students and, and, and as well as even the parents out there. So, you know, in, in, my, in, my, in my thing right now, uh, trust in the system. Uh, let me tell you, like I said, and I want to repeat this, I will not allow the schools to open if I am not certain that we are not in the most safest mode possible. And, and I want to thank everybody from the hospital people, public health people, and even our COVID task force for making that that, that thing a reality for us. And, and, you know, if there's anything that we need to look at, we don't want this situation that we're facing to defeat us. We need to defeat the, this situation at hand. So let, let's work around this and, and make it more uh, prominent for everybody as well. All right, board member Tenorio, did you have anything else to add? Sure, um, I'd like to, you know, uh, speak to students and thank the students that have so bravely spoken up um, to share their thoughts and their ideas, whether it's regarding keeping the schools closed or whether it's regarding reopening the schools. Um, I think it's, it's a pretty even split in terms of students who want to return and students who want to continue with online learning. Um, e either which way you feel strongly about, um, I appreciate it, and I think I, I think the whole board um, will feel this feels the same in terms of we are um, reading the messages, we are receiving the screenshots, we are um, very much aware uh, of uh, of those um, those messages and posts and different things that students are saying, um, and I encourage them to continue, to, you know, to use their voice to speak out. Um, Ultimately, it's their lives that um, are impacted the most by the decisions that we make up on the Hill. Um, and so we want them to know that we do not take that responsibility, responsibility lightly um, and that we appreciate all of their feedback and we will continue um, to read and listen um, because the situation is pretty fluid. I mean, as you, as you mentioned, like things changed over the weekend. Um, you know, despite, you know, information that had went out the week before, we were able to shift and pivot and make changes. Um, so the situation is very fluid and we would love to continue to hear from students uh, moving forward. Acting Commissioner, if you're still there, did you want to uh, add anything I might not have asked about? All right, I think uh, he might be in the, that other meeting, but I want to, I want to thank uh, all of you for your time and uh, appreciate it. And uh, we'll be definitely in touch uh, as, as schools continue to reopen throughout the next month. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you, Chairman.